Blessed be God, holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Plead your case before the mountains and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you mountains, the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord? and bow myself before God on high. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The response from the Psalms will be read in unison. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill, whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart, there is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. 
God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. The word of God. according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Our uh, scriptures today, I think, are perfect for annual meeting Sunday because they point us in a way to the mission statement of the Christian church. When Jesus went up on the mountain to give the Beatitudes, he was, in a way, recalling to the people there when Moses had gone up on Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments. And now Jesus gives his commandments, these Beatitudes, as part of a longer Sermon on the Mount, which actually goes for three chapters, and is his way of laying out what his movement, this Christian faith, is all going to be about. So I thought it was a good day to remember that, and also maybe to remember our parish mission statement, which you will now quote to me from memory. I'll, re I'll read it to you. <laughs> this is our parish mission statement. As members of Christ's body, 
nourished by word and sacrament, empowered by the Holy Spirit, St. Philip's feeds the heart as a community based on sharing the love of Christ with each other and our wider community. The soul, through worship that is grounded in our Anglican tradition and open to new liturgical and musical expressions and opportunities for spiritual growth and prayer. The mind, through education and formation for all ages, and the body, through concrete action in our outreach ministries, such as Rochester Area Neighborhood House, Lighthouse SOS, Bound Together, the Red Cross, St. Peter's, and others. That's our mission statement. It is drawn from our experience of trying to follow Jesus, of taking on board the wisdom of St. Paul that we aren't really that smart as human beings, that God's foolishness is wiser than our wisdom, and that we need to keep it simple and remind ourselves what we're about. So easy to get distracted by so many projects and tasks and busy work. But today is a day to remind ourselves of our core mission, to follow Jesus and to take on board the Sermon on the Mount and to live it out in these ways. We have said at St. Philip's over the years, for many years, that our primary mission is to feed and to feed in all these different ways, the heart, the soul, the mind, and the body. So let me give you a quick recap. You can read lots more in the annual report there, uh, it's online, and there are links to it in the epistle. We printed out some copies, not enough for everybody, but there are some copies uh, in the parlor if you want to grab one of those. That goes into great detail about what we've done at St. Philip's over the past year, but I wanted to, to mention a few highlights. One of the themes that the vestry uh, talked about last year at this time was as we began to reemerge from our pandemic isolation, you know, we had this is now going on three years of this uh, COVID pandemic. And the first year, of course, was shut down. The second year was let's worship in fits and starts. Are we going to be in the parking lot? That's why we added the Saturday newsletter, because nobody knew what worship was going to be like week by week. Are we going to be in church or is it just going to be videoed in church and then you'll be at home? Or are we going to be in the parking lot? The altar guild really enjoyed that period, I want to tell you. <laughs> of having to set up for who knows what every week. So but we should really thank the Altar Guild for their work. Let's, let's appreciate them. So, so the vestry said, you know, we really wanna emphasize this year is coming back together, reconnecting. Let's make fellowship a priority. Uh, we had no budget, but Jonathan found us money somehow for fellowship. I really appreciate that. Uh, so if you're ever looking for money, he's the guy, he can find it for you. And we did a number of great things. We had the Hawaiian lunch in September. We had Oktoberfest in October, Friendsgiving in November. We had coffee hour. We have a new kitchen manager, Karen Funyak. Where's Karen? There she is. She, she got a bunch of people trained in what the county expects for safe food preparation. Um, and so fellowship has really been a highlight this year, and I look forward to more opportunities in the coming year for that as well. In-person worship made a strong comeback when I was looking at the numbers. We are basically back to the numbers that we had before the pandemic as far as in-person worship. And as I've talked to colleagues around the diocese, that is not necessarily typical for all churches. So I really appreciate you all. Um, you know, a lot of priests during the, the depths of the pandemic thought, when we come back to church, is anybody going to be there? So it's lovely that we are here together. Uh, Christian education was a way of reconnecting. Sunday school and youth group were back, and I really want to express appreciation to Bev Bella and her wonderful group of teachers, and to Shar. I don't know if Shar is here, but uh, Shar who took on the nursery. And of course, our wonderful youth group advisors who are busy with the youth group downstairs preparing our breakfast, our brunch. Um, and that is Kathy Gravino and Jane Brown. 
Uh, we met and supported the Hashimi family, refugees from Afghanistan this year. And the latest report is that they are doing really well. They're settled. He has a job there. And, and Jane can probably fill us in more uh, later on. Another highlight for me this year was the emergence of new leaders. You know, every uh, church we go through cycles of leadership and there was this core of people who did everything for so long and really were kind of getting burned out. And so to see new leaders emerging in a variety of ways, and I wanna say that needs to continue. We need to continue to um, support and encourage new leadership in our church. But uh, Judy Marchioni took over the Red Cross blood drives from um, Stephanie Ubedi, and uh, we have a number of volunteers that help with the blood drives. As I mentioned, Karen became our kitchen coordinator. Tom West took over as neighborhood house liaison. A new women's lunch group was formed. A new men's group is just forming, and I want to introduce Rich Knapp. Rich, would you wave your hand? Rich in the back there is our leader for this new men's group. And I'll put the announcement in right now. The first meeting is this Thursday at 6.30. And uh, he needs to know if you're coming because he's making ribs. So join us at 6.30 and sign up with Rich uh, after church. Another highlight, and you'll hear a lot more about this from Jack Anderson, but uh, Jack Anderson and Bill Wagner uh, took it upon themselves as they have in the past to do thorough audits of our finances. And so over the past year, they have worked hard to complete audits for 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. And let me tell you, I've watched them work and they are meticulous. If you ever worry, how is the money being managed at St. Philip's? Is it really on the up and up? You know, we all hear stories about mismanagement they not, you know, a lot of even professional audits, they just dip in and do little spot checks of, of different transactions. Jack and Bill, I, I don't know what percentage of transactions you guys review, but it's got to be close to all. I mean, they look at everything. So we can rest assured that when we give money to this church, it is being very carefully managed and audited. And I want to appreciate the two of them for that exceptional work. Jack also took over the role of treasurer. He wants to make sure that you know that there was no conflict of interest. The bulk of the auditing was done before he officially became treasurer because it's a no-no to have your treasurer also be your auditor. So he, he took off the one hat before he put on the other hat. So thank you, Jack. We also bid a sad farewell to Bonnie Hakey, our former bookkeeper who died very suddenly last year at this time and we remember her in our prayers uh, later on. You'll hear much more about our finances in the annual report and in the meeting, and I urge you to talk with um, Jack or any member of the finance committee. In fact, if you're on the stewardship and finance committee, would you stand up so we can see who you are? There are more members, but these are guys you can talk to. <laughs> I also want to say a big thank you to our staff. We have a, a staff that are almost all part-time and work tremendously hard and go all of them above and beyond their um, job description in service of this church. Irene Sanchez, our parish administrator, uh, Jane Zellers, our bookkeeper, Beverly Vela, the director of our Sunday school and Christian education, Jim Bain, our director of music, Father John Muhlendijk, our Franciscan pastoral associate. Is that, did I get that right? Close. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and Brian Vlaming, who is our sexton, who keeps uh, up with our building. Just really appreciate all of them and the work they do. A lot of it behind the scenes. A lot of it you all don't get to see, uh, but I certainly do. And I want to announce that Beverly Vella will be stepping down as director of Christian Ed at the end of the school year. And I wanna say a special thank you to her. We'll thank her later as Sunday school wraps up, but really appreciate the work that she's done taking on Sunday school at probably the most thankless time one could possibly do it when we were still in the depths of the pandemic and then trying to come back 
she's had to be super creative and has put in just a huge amount of love and effort uh, for Sunday school. So Beverly, thank you. So a couple notes about the year to come. Um, we are finalizing a plan to improve our live streaming capabilities. Um, as much as we love running wires and uh, microphones back and forth around the church and taping down the wires, there's a more elegant solution. <laughs> and so with uh, money from Frank Lude's memorial and another special gift, we are going to be able to install a new system with cameras. And we'll talk more about that and encourage some signups for people to help run that system. It'll be really fun uh, and a higher quality of product for, doesn't mean you don't have to come to church too, okay? But it'll look really good when you're home watching as well. I mentioned the men's group that is getting off to its good start this week. I wanna mention what's happening for Lent this year. Lent is only a few weeks away. And so um, I have some clipboards for signups and I'm, I'm kind of half joking, but I'm also threatening to lock the doors until I get enough signups. But we're gonna do a daily video devotion for Lent this year. And it's gonna come from you all. I have scripts for you. You don't have to be super creative. You just read the script. If you want to make a couple comments about the scripture, you can, but the idea is you video yourself or I video you, and then we do that over the next few weeks, and then when Lent starts, every day you get a little email with a video message from one of your fellow parishioners with a prayer and the gospel reading for that day in Lent. But for this to work, we need you to sign up. So I have 11 people so far, which means I need 29 more people. I see... 29 people here, and then some. So I think we can do this, but I would love to get that sign up uh, accomplished. The other program for Thursday nights in Lent, our traditional time for Lent, our theme is going to be Eat, Pray, Love. Do you remember that book and movie? Well, this has nothing to do with that. <laughs> it really is literally Eat, Pray, and Love. We're gonna eat soup suppers, and then we're going to come into the church and pray, have a meditative devotional service, and then the love part is we're gonna feature one of our partner outreach ministries, one of the ones that we have had the closest connections to, ones I mentioned before, Neighborhood House, Bound Together, SOS, St. Peter's, and so forth. Each night, uh, we're gonna have a presentation by one of those outreach ministries and learn more about them and find out how uh, our ministry with them can either expand or continue and the impact that it has on the lives of the people in our wider community. The focus on outreach for Lent this year. Also wanna mention, we've had so many wonderful new people joining the church. I've been doing a class all this past year and it will end this May on the Episcopal Church and you. And I wanna make a special invitation. If you have never been confirmed or received into the Episcopal Church, this is your opportunity. Uh, over the next month, I'll be collecting people's names and information. We'll submit it to the diocese. And on June 3rd at St. John's in Royal Oak, the bishop will be present to do a deanery confirmation. So I really encourage you, if you've ever thought about becoming formally a member of the church, to do that, to contact me, and I will uh, walk you through that process. Um, next, I would say, uh, as I look ahead at this year, uh, in September, I'm going to be taking a sabbatical, and I'll tell you why. I had, you know, one of those long, dark nights of the soul about a year ago. I was feeling really fried from the pandemic and wondering what I was doing and why I was doing it, and I thought, should I just throw in the towel? You know, when I get to that 30-year mark, I'll be eligible for a pension. Should I just you know, hang up my, my uh, sneakers and call it a day. And over this past year, I prayed a lot about that. And the word that came to me was absolutely not. You are not finished. You have work to do. You have work to do here. Um, but one of the thoughts was, how can I make sure that these next several years with you are the most productive possible? And so I talked to the bishop and the diocese recommends that around at seven years, 
that a priest take a sabbatical of about three months. And so I will just be coming up on seven years uh, this fall. And so with the vestry's permission and with the bishop's permission, I'm gonna take a sabbatical from Labor Day till Thanksgiving. Now I have supply clergy lined up, uh, but there are some plans that will need to be made to make sure that our ministries continue smoothly uh, during that time. And one of the areas that I'm most concerned about is pastoral care, making sure that we have adequate care for our members when they're in the hospital or needing communion at home. And so I'm looking for some folks to help with that. If you feel any sense of calling to pastoral care ministry, um, speak to me or to Jed Youngman, and we will put together a little group and talk about how we can plan for this fall and beyond to enhance and improve our pastoral care uh, to our members. Uh, let's see. And I want to end with uh, money. One more thing about money. I've had a vision for a while. You know, every year it seems, and you'll hear about this, we're going to talk about our flat roof later on today. And uh, one more big buildings and grounds project that we weren't anticipating, don't have the funds for. And it seems like every year that happens. There's a big project and we go, oh, how are we going to deal with this? So here's my vision for you. We will get through that. We'll find a way to tackle the flat roof project. But you know, there's always going to be another one. It's going to be the parking lot. Eventually, it's going to be the boiler. Don't, don't, boiler, don't listen to that. You're fine. But, uh, you know, there's always going to be something. And so um, I am encouraging this church and all of us to consider what it might look like if we had an endowment, an endowment that could help us cover some of those uh, buildings and grounds costs. In, here's my vision. In several years, after all of you go home and talk to your attorney and put the church in your will, we end up with a million dollars in an endowment. And then we take 4% of that a year, that's $40,000 that could be allocated to keep us ahead of the eight ball. It just feels like we're always behind the eight ball. Now, a million dollars sounds like a lot, but here's how I do the math. If 10 people put the church in their will for 100,000, that's a million. Or if 100 people put the church in their will for 10,000, that's a million. That sounds like a lot, but I think it is achievable if we have the will and the vision to do it. So I just encourage you, we'll talk some more about this in other times and places, but just encourage you as you think about your stewardship and your giving to the church, we really appreciate your annual pledges. And I'm amazed that after three years of pandemic, we are doing as well as we are with membership and with giving are phenomenal. But I encourage you to take the long view also and think about the impact that you could have, the legacy that you could have by remembering the church in your will. All right, that sermon is over. In conclusion, I believe that this church is strong because of the commitment of the lay members of this church. Clergy come and go, I think I said that last week, but it is the core of dedicated members of this church which has made the difference for all of its life. And that continues. The sky is the limit for St. Philip's. It is amazing how well we are doing today after three years of this terrible pandemic, of isolation, of disconnection. I'm just so grateful that we have the energy, the people, and the generosity that we have in this church. The heart of this parish is and will be strong lay leadership and participation. Your dreams, your leadership, your participation make all the difference as we together strive to live out the mission that God has given us to do, to feed God's people in body, mind, heart, and spirit, to follow Jesus from the Mount of the Beatitudes into Galilee, into the world that God has called us to serve. So when you see those clipboards coming around later today, sign up. If you see an opportunity for ministry that's not being done, sign up or express your vision or idea. You don't have to wait to be tapped. I think there's this feeling. I know this was true in the church where I grew up. 
it was considered very poor manners to put yourself forward for something. Oh, to, to say, I'd like to help with something. Oh, no, no. You need to be tapped by someone invited to one of these ministries. Well, let's put that to rest forever. If you feel a call, step forward. If you have an idea, put it forward. If you've got people that you want to join with, go for it. My job is in the main to say yes, to say thank you, and to invite God's presence and blessing. And so that's what I do today. Invite God's presence and blessing on this gathering of St. Philip's Episcopal Church as we meet for our annual meeting today. May God bless us, equip us, and strengthen us to serve and to love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. He was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church, that, that we, we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that, that your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Wendell and Stuart, our retired bishops, Eric and John, our priests, Lutheran bishops, Elizabeth, Donald, and Craig, our diocesan household, especially St. John's in Plymouth. In the Dominican Republic, we pray for St. Barnabas in Pizaret, Holy Cross in Santa Fe, Moises their bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they, that they may, may be faithful, faithful ministers, ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, Gretchen, our governor, the Congress and Supreme Court, for an end to the war in Ukraine, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, that there, there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those commended to our prayers, especially Daniel, Renee, Margaret, Merv, Rose and Robin, Sylvia, George, Catherine, Gregory, John and Virginia, Elise, Robin and Sue, Wilma, Leo and Jan, Jim, 
David and Karen, Sarah, Henry and Sheila, Jane, Margaret, Leon, Richard, Courtney, David, David and those we name now. Mary Jane. And all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. For first responders and those serving in the armed forces, especially Ryan, Trace, Stephanie, Dylan, Matthew, Dan, and Preston. Remembering the departed, especially Tom and those we name now. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light, light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another. Do we have any additional birthdays or anniversaries this week? Let us pray. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, Lincoln, all right, so we're adding Lincoln. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in you we live and move and have our being. Your love gives us life and sustains all of our relationships. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they remember and celebrate all the anniversaries of their lives, including their birth, baptism, marriage, ordination, and others, especially Jennifer, Olivia, John, and Lincoln. Sustain them with your bountiful spirit and grant them the grace to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart in this life and in the life to come through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. I want to say a special word of thanks again to Evelyn Schutte, filling in for Jim Bain. Evelyn um, is uh, just such a treasure. We're so glad that you can be with us and to offer your wonderful musical gifts. And today our soloist is Jennifer Jones. So we're delighted about that as well. A um, couple things to note today, just how the flow is going to work. We're going to go downstairs to the fellowship hall for brunch uh, served by the youth group. And then as soon as you're done, come back upstairs to the great hall for the meeting part of our program. This Saturday, we are bidding farewell to Tom Sampier, having his funeral here at St. Philip's, the uh, Family will be greeting people at 10 o'clock. The service will be at 11, and then there'll be a luncheon at noon. Um, so um, prayers for Sarah in particular 
and the rest of Tom's family. Uh, we also, as I mentioned, have the men's group this Thursday. The first Thursday of the month is also when we have our birthday lunch, which is open to everyone. That's at noon at a different restaurant. Look at the uh, epistle for details about that. Um, and anything else? What am I forgetting? I think we'll, we'll have time later. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and a good and a joyful thing to give thanks to you, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to faithfulness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation and we sing.
Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation, this bread and wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with blessed Philip and all your saints, past and present and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever. And now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to sing. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. 
the gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving. Sorry.
Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you that your lives may be a light to the world and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Gracious God, we thank you for so many gifts. We thank you for the gift of this church and community. Thank you for the gift of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to do your work in the world. Bless us now as we meet in this annual meeting. Bless the food that we're about to receive and the hands that prepared it. Keep us ever mindful of the needs of others through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.